Okay, good afternoon everybody. Time for another cooking demo. Hopefully the quality will be a little bit better today. There were some uh, Wi-Fi issues yesterday and I think they resulted in less than clear video. So I'm hoping today will go better. We're going to be doing a recipe that is uh, called tempeh lettuce and tomato sandwiches. And the tempeh is a uh, it's a green, three grain tempeh block that you can get. This one is from Trader Joe's. And um, tempeh is a form of soybeans that have been fermented. So kind of like tofu, I know you've probably tried tofu and tofu is a form of soybeans. The soybeans are cooked down. The soy milk from the soybeans is turned into sort of a thick uh, mixture and a coagulant is added to the soybean milk and that turns into a block of tofu. Well, tempeh is similar, but tempeh is fermented. So it then becomes, it turns into a block. It's a lot more solid and it's a lot more concentrated than um, tofu. So you can tell by the way I'm handling it. It's kind of like a dry block of something. Now, um, again, for those of you just now tuning in, tempeh, you can buy it at various stores. I bought this at Trader Joe's and it's very tasty. I really like it, but there are lots of different brands out there. Just get whatever you can find right now. You can probably order it online on Instacart or one of the other delivery services if you have them in your area. And the tempeh, to use it, what I do with it is I cut the block into squares about this size. Now, this package, had about enough to make four of these blocks. I've used a couple of them already to make my sample of this recipe. What I did in the beginning is I steamed the tempeh. So I'm gonna show you my steamer pan. It's one of these old fashioned pans with a little steaming basket in it. And I, I just put some water in the bottom and I boiled the water and I stuck the tempeh in the top of the steamer and I let it steam for 15 minutes. So uh, you might wonder, well, why would you do that? Why do you have to steam tempeh when uh, you're gonna cook it and you're gonna season it? Well, the problem is sometimes because it's fermented, it might have a kind of a stronger taste. Hi, Pam, I see you're watching. Thanks for watching. So it, it does kind of have a strong taste. I don't know how to describe it. It's not unpleasant, but I found that if you steam the tempeh, it will make it taste a lot more mellow. So once I've steamed it, then I cut it into slices. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut it into each little section into three slices with my knife. And it, it cuts pretty easily. So, you know, you can see I cut this one block into three pieces and they're, they're uh, holding together really well. I'm gonna do the same thing with the second one. You need a really good, sharp, thin bladed knife for this. Be careful, don't cut your hand. <laughs> okay, so out of that half, I got six pieces. Now I've already made some earlier, so that's the other, you know, I was able to make five pieces because I cut one too thick, but I've already made some. So I have my tempeh, and the next thing I'm gonna do is marinate it. Hi Karen, how are you? Good to, good to know you're watching. I know you've been to my classes before and you know what it's like. I'm teaching to no one except whoever's watching on Facebook, which is fine. So what I've got, I've got my tempeh from Trader Joe's and I've cut it into some pieces after I steamed it for a few minutes. Now, if you don't wanna steam it, you don't have to steam it. The steaming does the steaming does mellow it out. I think it improves the taste of it. So then we put it in the marinade. Now the marinade, and you'll find this in your recipe, it's a very simple marinade of some, I'll show you the ingredients. And all the, the amounts of the marinade will be in the recipe that I post as soon as this is over. Let's see who's chimed in. Lori Whitworth, hi Lori. Eating her apple crisp from yesterday right now. Where are you located? I'm in Azel, Texas. That's kind of near Fort Worth. So uh, maybe you can visit me. Some people have come from far away. 
such as Pam, who lives very far away from here. She lives in Maryland, right, Pam? And she came for a private workshop, and hopefully she learned something, but I see she's been following me on these, um, these videos, which I so appreciate. I go back and see all the comments and see who said something and try to answer them all. I'm trying to answer them as they are going. Uh, Cindy Delgado, thanks for the video, love it. Jody Ellis, hi. You know, I, I do appreciate everyone um, <clears throat> getting together and getting on these videos with me. Uh, some people are home alone. Uh, some, some of my friends have said they've been isolated and alone now for several days and they feel like they don't really interact with anybody. Well, hey, you know, you can interact with someone while they're cooking and maybe that will help a little bit. Hi, Lisa. Lisa, I'm waiting for you to do some live videos. Lisa Wright is a chef friend of mine and she's extremely talented. And I'm waiting for her to start her own series of Facebook live videos because I know we would love to see her. Uh, Karen, her class is old, Karen. She says they're worth whatever, but I'm gonna have to come up with a new system because obviously no one's going to any classes anytime very soon, so. I'm testing out some different things. Tonight I'm doing a practice Zoom meeting with some people that follow me on my group. I have a support group called Chef Julia Support Group. And I asked that anyone who wanted to be on my test meeting send me their email address. And at seven o'clock Central Time, I'm going to log in to the Zoom meeting app, have it on my laptop, and I'm gonna do it here in my kitchen and it's a much broader picture than this um, little portrait picture on Facebook Live. It shows you a lot more of my kitchen. And I'm gonna try to set it up so that eventually I could get back to teaching classes, but teach them through the Zoom app. So it's like a live class. Let's see who else is on here. Nancy Ritter, hi Nancy. I'm glad you could come on. Um, Nancy had mentioned earlier that she's been by herself now for a couple of weeks. and. She's not seeing anybody staying home alone, and that, that's kind of a, that's a reality for a lot of us. So we need to support one another. I would be happy to donate to watch you so that you could have live videos. Oh, well, thank you guys. Um, I don't really need anything right now, so I, I don't mind doing these for free, but eventually, after things settle down a little bit, if I have to do distance Cooking classes, I'll figure out a way to make it work out. But for now, if you have any extra money, you know, give it to somebody who's out of work. That would mean a lot to me that, you know, you help somebody, help somebody. So back to the tempeh. For those of you who are just getting in, the tempeh is a block of fermented soybeans. It's kind of like tofu, but it's a little bit uh, more robust. And what I did was I steamed it in a, just a steaming pan like probably your grandma had for 15 minutes. And that takes away some of the strong taste of the tempeh, because tempeh does, you know, for some people, they, they think it's got an off-putting strong taste. And then I've got it in this little marinade. And the nice thing about tempeh is you don't have to marinate it for very long. It soaks up the marinade very quickly, so just like five minutes. And I'll send you the exact recipe for the tempeh as soon as we're done. Uh, it does have some tamari. If you don't want to use tamari, you can use liquid aminos or low sodium soy sauce. It does have liquid smoke. The liquid smoke makes it taste kind of like bacon. In fact, if you continue to cook the tempeh even longer than what I'll tell you to cook it, it will get kind of chewy textured, kind of like bacon. It uses a little maple syrup, paprika, cumin, and cayenne pepper, a little salt, pinch of salt. So those are the things in my marinade. So all I've done then is I've kept it in the marinade for a few minutes and I'm gonna show you two ways that you can cook it. The first way is in the air fryer. Now I don't know how many of you are using air fryers. I brought mine here front and center so you can see it. So here's my air fryer. Let me see if there's any other questions. Uh, what's a good substitute for liquid smoke? I really don't know other than smoked paprika. Uh, some people say smoked paprika gives food kind of a smoky taste. So you could, instead of using regular paprika, use smoked paprika. I'm not so crazy about smoked paprika, so I don't tend to use it, but I do have liquid smoke, so that's why I used it. 
Okay, so I have my air fryer. This is a Cuisinart air fryer. I've had it for quite a while, and it makes um, things turn out really well. It's great for making oil-free french fries, if you can believe that, and for reheating stuff, and for making crispy tofu. You can make tofu jerky. Uh, you can make all kinds of good things. Let's see, is that an oven or convection? Give the same result. Oh, Yes, uh, I'm going to cover the oven here in a minute. So for people that want to mess with their air fryer, I'm going to put half of these in the air fryer. So I'm going to just put three in the air fryer. And I'm going to put it on about 325. 350 is too hot. Um, 300 was too low. 325 is about right. So five minutes for that. Now if I had my class going on, I would ask somebody in the class to time it because it's hard to talk and cook at the same time. But we'll just figure it out. And then I'm gonna put the other three pieces on a sheet pan. So these will go in the oven. So if I had the whole recipe, they would all just be laid out on the sheet pan. Uh, I've used smoked paprika as a substitute for liquid smoke. Use less at first until you get used to the taste of it. Okay, that's a good idea. Hi Susan, I miss you guys. I sure wish I could see you. And Maya, my 15 year old mixed lab and boxer is doing great. In fact, she seems stronger than ever before. She's walking up and down the stairs, who knows? She, this is gonna be her 15th birthday this year and she'll be going on 16. Okay, so I would put this in the oven at 375. Check it after about 10 minutes, flip it over cook it for another five to 10 minutes, depending on how cooked you want it. Different people vary. Some people don't like it too chewy. If you like it more cooked, you just cook it longer. But the last five minutes, what I'll do is I will brush it with marinade. So here's my marinade. It's nothing more than barbecue sauce. And that gives it this really nice kind of a glaze and it gives it more flavor. And the barbecue sauce I have is, yeah, my air fryer's in the way. I bought one at the supermarket, a gourmet thing. It's um, called Austin's Own. And it, the reason I liked it is because it has zero fat and it has very low sugar content and low sodium. So when you look at commercial types of barbecue sauce, a lot of them are just like full of sugar and fat. So be careful. Just find one that you like that doesn't have a lot of, of you know, sugar and fat in it or has no fat, preferably, or make your own. You know, ideally we should all be making our own, but you know, that's not always easy to do. It's, we're busy doing other things, so we might not have time to make our own from scratch barbecue sauce. So, you know, find one that, that's acceptable to you. And so then the end result, and I did make some of these earlier because it would be hard for you to wait on the video while the food is baking. That would be kind of boring. So this is the oven version. And it has a really firm texture, but it's not super browned on the outside. Now, if I wanted to make it bubbly and brown, what I would do is brush it with some of that barbecue sauce and put it under the broiler and then it would get kind of dark brown and bubbly. So you can definitely do that or cook it a little bit longer. Now, on the other hand, let me see how I'm doing on my time. I got a couple more minutes. The one in the air fryer did get a lot crispier and browner. You can kind of see that it has a lot more color to it. Oh, I miss you too, Susan. The, um, even the edges are kind of brown and if you tasted it, it would taste very chewy. And if we even cut it thinner, I think we could trick ourselves into thinking we were eating some form of bacon. Not that we want to eat bacon, but you know what I mean. Just kind of have that texture of bacon. So it's, it really has a good flavor, I think. Uh, I like it a lot. And I've made various versions of things with tempeh. You know, you can make tempeh, keep it cut up in blocks, you know, thicker sections. Like when I showed you the block of tempeh, we could have cut it into thicker strips, kind of like that. I marinated it and um, made it, cooked it on the grill and made them look like barbecue ribs. I've seen people do that. So um, 
that could be great. Did you put barbecue sauce on the tempeh in the air fryer? No, I have not put barbecue sauces. In fact, in one minute, I'm going to open it up and I'm going to turn the tempeh and brush it with barbecue sauce. So thanks for reminding me. I will do that. So uh, why do we want to eat a sandwich? You know, it's kind of like, you know, sandwiches, whole food plant-based. Well, you know, we do eat bread and you know, the bread, this is a good bread. You can order it or get it at Whole Foods. If you can't go out to the store, Whole Foods does do some de delivery services through Prime One and through Instacart. And this is a bakery called Heartland Bread Company. And they have all kinds of bread. And it was funny, I went to Whole Foods a few days ago and they had all kinds of bread. This bread was very easy to find. But it has no oil, not at all. And it has... Um, you know, it's, it's very organic and well-prepared. It has very few ingredients in it. I can't find the ingredients, of course, now that I'm looking. Okay, it has uh, stone ground wheat flour, water, rye barley, oats, nine grain blend, and you know, different kinds of things and some yeast. So it doesn't have all the chemicals and preservatives. I do buy the good seed bread and um, the good seed bread used to not have any oil, but I've heard now that all of Dave's breads have some small amount of oil. I've got to turn the tempeh. Somebody asked, does tempeh have gluten? Well, you have to be careful and check. Like some tempeh does have gluten. And the label should say, like if it's pure tempeh, pure just soybeans and nothing added, it's probably gonna be gluten-free. But this one from Trader Joe's has it has the soybeans, the brown rice, barley, and millet. So it has some other things. And on the label, it's certified organic, but nowhere does it say it's gluten-free. So this one's probably not gluten-free because it doesn't say it. If it was, it would say that. But I know for a fact that other tempeh I've bought has been labeled gluten-free. All right, so I've got my, I have to drop that. I've got my tempeh. And you can see it's starting to turn this nice little brown. And it doesn't stick. I have nothing on here. I have no oil, nothing. And it's not gonna stick. None of, none of my stuff sticks in the air fryer usually, even though I don't use oil in it, it just doesn't. So I don't know why all of us used to feel like we had to put spray oil on everything we did, because we really don't. It was just unnecessary. So I'm gonna put that back. And I'm going to let that cook for another minute or two, and I'm going to watch it. Like with a lot of things, uh, I really don't give you a set amount of time. I like to tell you, you know, use a general time, but keep an eye on it because you never know. Um, your air fryer may have a different, uh, may cook faster, it may not cook as fast. It, these things vary. So... I would experiment and just keep a close eye on it. Someone has a question, can I please see the barbecue sauce label up close? Can I find tempeh at HEB? Yes, um, I found lots of tempeh at Central Market. This is the label. It's um, from Austin. Can you all see it? And I will post a picture of all the ingredients at the end. But a lot of times, it's called Austin's Own Barbecue Sauce. A lot of times, Central Market has another brand. It's called uh, Eves, Y-V-E-S, Tempeh. And it's in a little more of a, a square package. And that's the kind I usually get. But I wanted to see if Trader Joe's was different, tasted good. Thank you for doing these videos. I have been enjoying them. My HEB carries tempeh in the produce aisle. Thank you, Patty. Thank you, Lori. Lori, wow, that was hot. Lori lives in um, Granberry, no, Glen Rose. Is that correct, Lori? So if HEB has it, then uh, you could probably find it at other grocery stores. I didn't wait very long because I wanted to check that. Once you put barbecue sauce on stuff, it can burn fast in the air fryer. So I'm going to put a little more barbecue sauce. Now, um, if you ask me, I prefer the tempeh cooked in the air fryer, but the oven air fryer or the oven
baked tempeh is also very good. Because for a long time I did not have, I'm going to turn it up to 350 to let it get a little browner. For a long time I didn't have an air fryer. And um, I made this and I thought it was fine. And then when I experimented and made it in the air fryer, I liked it even better. So I have our bread. So I'm going to try to put together a sandwich. So I have our bread. I'm going to put vegetables, of course, on the sandwich. You know, you know, whatever you like. Some people don't like lettuce and tomatoes and onions and pickles and jalapeno peppers, but I do. Uh, you guys tell me, is there anything else you put on your sandwiches besides these things? And then, not only that, I see Glenn Clancy watching my son. Hey, Nancy. Nancy has some tempeh in her freezer that she's going to try. That's good. Hopefully, it will turn out. So in addition to the lettuce, tomato, uh, red onions, pickles, we could put my favorite candied jalapeno peppers. Now look at that label. I buy these all the time at Central Market and they are so delicious. In fact, this year I do some canning. I can my own. These are my pickles, my chef pickles that I can every year because I grow a bunch of cucumbers. I think this year I'm going to make some pickled jalapeno peppers that are candy. Now they're probably not the healthiest thing because they're going to have sugar, but I won't eat too many of them. And then we have the regular jalapeno peppers, radishes, avocado. Yes, I have an avocado here, everybody. We're going to put avocado on. Uh, mustard, we can put mustard. Jalapenos. Alexandra Stokes, oh, all right. Both two of my children are watching. Sometimes my grandchildren come on here and watch with their mom. I don't see them today, but I've seen, I heard one day that Cage, my little four-year-old grandson, was watching all by himself. I was so impressed. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. All right. I think these are done. I'll show you how lovely they turned out. You, can you see that they're kind of, they've got that nice little char around the edge? So, you know, they have this nice little char and they're kind of chewy and they're, they're good. You know, they're gonna be something that you can really feel like when you're using it, it's meaty. And that's one of the things when you go plant-based, people will say they miss things like regular sandwiches and, you know, things they used to eat. Oh, Lori said she lost the video thread. Well, um, if you're losing the video thread, Hopefully it will be recorded and you can watch the rest of it later. So I hope you guys are still out there. What air fryer do you have? I have the Cuisinart. It's a Cuisinart and it's a combination air fryer, toaster oven, convection oven, and it sits on my kitchen counter in the other room. And it has a tray that I can use for toast. Like if I'm using it for toast, I have this tray in. And if I'm using it for the air fryer, it has that in. Speaking of toast, you know, we could toast our bread in here. That always makes a good sandwich. I'm not gonna do that right now because we need to get going with this. Hey, Linda Nickel, thanks for watching. You probably watched every single video. I do appreciate it. No one mentioned cheese. So um, I have some plant-based cheese here and um, it's really hard to find the apparently there's a shortage on plant-based cheese at the grocery store now i've heard that all of it's out everywhere but you can make your own and all it is is soaked raw cashews lemon juice a little miso some uh, seasonings and you can make this cheese and it's like a spread and i'll uh, i'll give you the link to the recipe for this because this is not my original recipe this recipe is from and i'm going to just spread it on one side and it has a most delicious taste. And the nice thing about it is this cheese has been frozen for weeks. And I made a batch of it and froze it in these little containers and it's still good. Oh, hi, Diane Morrison, how are you? Good to see you on here. What exactly is tempeh? Tempeh is a block of fermented tofu. So it's compressed soybean. So if you really look closely at tempeh, you can see the outline of soybeans you look really closely at it you can see they're just soybeans that have been treated in such a way that they're 
they're kind of compressed and they're aged and they have prebiotics they have a very high nutrient content i wrote down that uh, tempeh has 20 grams of protein per serving and it's good for um, your digestive health and it reduces inflammation so really tempeh is um, one of those really healthy foods and dr gregor in his book how not to diet talks about he doesn't really think tofu is all that great but he recommends that people eat tempeh so don't be afraid to eat tempeh uh, the ultimate cashew cheese recipe is in my book plant-based plant-powered families hey pj you can catch up and watch the rest of the video later on but this is her recipe for ultimate cashew cheese so i'll send you a link to that i think it's probably online but um you know, I like the fact that you can freeze it. Now I'm gonna put some mustard on my sandwich because we don't use mayo, right? So um, not even plant mayo because it's full of fat. We could use cashew mayo, but that's kind of what this cheese sauce is. It's kind of like, you know, cashew mayonnaise is really cashew, uh, ground up cashews, food, food processor cashews that have been kind of made into a creamy mixture or like a nut butter, so cashew butter. So, you know, we can use that, and you know, that doesn't always fill the void that you might have left from not eating mayonnaise. I kind of was a big mayonnaise fan, so I've always sort of missed mayonnaise. Anybody out there miss mayonnaise? You know, you don't have to admit it, but I always did. All right, so our we'll put our freshly made, chewy, delicious tempeh on our sandwich. And it's kind of thin, which is what I like too. I can imagine eating this for breakfast with some uh, tofu scramble or a long, oh, I know, this um, tempeh would be good with waffles, kind of like a ham or a bacon. And if you want to make waffles with me, we're going to do the waffles on Saturday because a lot of people have not been to my classes Oh yes, PJ. PJ is the one that asked for a sandwich. She said she wanted to learn how to make a sandwich that wasn't a burger because she's been to all my veggie burger classes. So I made, I'm making the sandwich because PJ requested it. So anyway, um, Saturday I'm gonna do a video about the waffle and I'll make the waffle for you. But a lot of you have been to my breakfast class so you probably think, you know, the waffle is old news but somebody in one of my classes requested that i take the waffle batter and make pancakes with it i've never done that so i'm going to try to make pancakes with my waffle batter and i'm also going to make oh i can't wait till saturday oh yes kathy thanks for attending all these videos so i'm going to make the delicious wonderful waffles inspired by brenda carney who was watching the videos last week she's from louisiana she came to one of my classes and told me about this outstanding waffle their family always made. And so I kind of made my own version. So that was wonderful. So we're going to make waffles on Saturday. But just imagine if you made this tempeh. Now imagine having a little side of this chewy tempeh with your bacon, with, I mean with your bacon, with your pancakes or waffles. I think it would taste delicious. And you don't have to put barbecue sauce on it. Uh, you can marinate the tempeh in anything you want. You can marinate it in uh, Worcestershire sauce and mustard and um, vinegar or whatever, uh, garlic, onion powder. You, it takes any kind of flavor profile and it's kind of like tofu. Whatever you put on it, it will kind of um, take on the flavors of that food. Okay, so we have our delicious tempeh, our plant cheese, our bread and if those of you who didn't chime, come on till later I have Heartland bread that I get at Whole Foods and you can order it with your um, Instacart or uh, they have a thing called Prime Now if you're an Amazon Prime member they'll deliver groceries to your house they don't do it in my area I kind of live out of the way but they'll do it in a lot of areas okay Sharon Christinger I would love to see you make burgers and I will admit I was a mayo fan yeah I see some mayo fans out there I miss mayo. I do have some vegan just mayo in my fridge that I bought for some special chef thing. And I look at it sometimes and think, 
I'm really tempted to put that on my sandwich, but then I end up making hummus, so I've been pretty good about it. I have a question for everyone. You don't have to admit it, but I have found myself this past week especially eating stuff that is not plant-based, like weird stuff that I would never ever eat just because it was there and my husband was eating it and I was so anxious. I did that for like three days and then I started feeling so bad physically. So then I came, went right back to my normal whole food, plant-based, green smoothies, vegetables. And I do feel a lot better. I've been exercising every day and doing these videos is helping me. It's helping me stay in touch with you, trying to be healthy and not give in to comforting myself with food because I have a long history of, I think I'm a long history of being a food addict for, you know, to tell you the truth, but it's a long history of using food for emotional needs. So if anybody out there, oh, snacking, someone said they're snacking a lot. Um, you know, it's just, it's hard when it's stressful not to munch on stuff. So I, I feel you, I, I understand if you're going through that, don't be hard on yourself because I think it's probably something a lot of people are struggling with. Just know that the healthier you eat, the more vegetables and fruits and whole foods, the better you're gonna feel. I haven't eaten anything other than whole food plant-based, but I find I'm eating more than normal. That's from Patty. And uh, Nancy loves Heartland bread, but it's hard to find. Okay, so here's our sandwich. Um, well, I like, I love onions. Oh my gosh, I love red onions. And I planted red onions in my garden uh, last year. And it was so funny, I didn't, they had never grown onions before, so I put a bunch of them in there thinking, uh, you know, maybe I'll get something. Well, they came back this year, so I have these beautiful, huge spring red onions that are so good. Oh, Karen said she had a handful of peanut butter M&Ms. Oh, Karen, I know, I, I ate some of my husband's cookies that I normally can resist, but they were calling my name. Okay, so I have onions. Uh, these are my homemade pickles, sweet and sat, sweet and spicy pickles. People that come to my classes, back when I used to have in-person classes, would always get to sample pickles. And can someone say what else we always sample? What else? Put it on there so I could see. Is it possible to make healthy plant-based chocolate? Healthy plant-based chocolate. I taught a chocolate class in February and we made the most amazing chocolate bark with milk-free, super dark, delicious, coverture chocolate. And it had nuts and raisins and cranberries and it was good. So yes, we can make some really good chocolate and maybe we'll make chocolate bark. Okay, Karen said hippie bread. Yes, at every class I make some version of hippie banana bread. It's either pumpkin bread, banana bread, but some kind of sweet bread. And what's something else I make? Uh, Nancy said she's a food addict too. She doesn't keep anything in the house other than plant-based food, one benefit of living alone. Yeah, you know, if, if I only had to live by myself, I would not tempt myself with gourmet chocolate-filled cookies and my husband keeps them in the closet. Hummus, yes, Karen. So another thing we always have at cooking classes is I'll put out a platter of homemade oil-free hummus, some raw vegetables, sometimes some multigrain crackers, chips, and then of course the hippie banana bread. So everyone gets a little plate of food while we're having a class. And the class is held right in this room where you're watching me. There's a counter here and people sit around and they munch on stuff, I cook, they taste it. So I feel bad that you can't taste the food, that you're having to just look at it, you don't get to sample it. That's why I like to do the in-person classes. All right, so I'm gonna pile on some tomatoes. I only have cherry tomatoes because I don't wanna go to the store. I'm getting kind of afraid to go. You know, I, I don't know about you, you're probably all younger, but I'm 65, I'll be 66 this year. So I believe I'm in a very high risk group. Even though I feel very healthy, I'm still in that group that, you know, are more susceptible to having a bad 
outcome if we do become infected with the coronavirus. So I'm doing what they're telling me. My kids are telling me, don't leave the house, mom, don't leave the house. I'm trying so hard to stay home and to order things from the outside. So right now, I don't have any tomatoes and I have a big order in to um, Instacart and it's supposed to come tomorrow. Okay, what city are you in? I'm in Ace, Texas. It's near Fort Worth. So I put avocado and lettuce, tomatoes, and pickles. And now I have some other things. I have my candied jalapeno peppers. Oh, and I put, I have jalapeno peppers here. I already cut some up or got some out of the jar. So I've got my jalapeno peppers and I've got my tempeh. I've got everything. So we're going to slam it all together. And we have to cut it in half, right? But just sandwiches are cut in half. Now, if you had to go somewhere and take something with you to eat, avocado fell out. I think the reason my son, Glenn, is watching this is he's staying with me right now. And I told him that if he, um, well, he's going to be around. I said, oh, after the video, you can eat the sandwich. So he was kind of excited about that. He's probably waiting to see when I'm done. Okay, I cut the avocado, and that's how it looks. Doesn't that look delicious? I would eat that. Okay, um, to cut your avocado, first of all, don't try to stab it with the knife and pull the pit out because... A lot of people have done that and they have gotten hurt. So I just kind of lift the pit out, you know, with a spoon. But if you want to peel your avocado without wrecking it, here's the way sushi chefs do it. They kind of cut off a little piece off the top. Try not to put your hand in the way. So I cut off a little piece at the top, like that, a thin piece, and then, make a little knife cut, a little slit, and the avocado peel will come right off so that you don't have to try to ruin your avocado peeling it. So I guess one little piece didn't come off, but overall you have a nice smooth piece of avocado. And then what you could do, and I would never do this with a sharp knife, uh, Cindy Stout. Oh, I thank you, Cindy. Then you can take your table knife and then you can cut your avocado into thin pieces. So like the sushi chef would, you know, they would cut it in a lot of thin pieces, but it's just a, an easy way to cut your avocado up. Uh, the other way I did when I was making the avocado for the sandwich is I just cut it while it was still in the shell and then I just kind of scooped it out and that works too. I do that. I, I alternate. The avocados are from Costco. You can get Costco avocados, you can get a big sack for like $5.99. And you look at it and you think, oh, I'll never use that many avocados. But they're not that big. And for whatever reason, they're very high quality. So once they start to ripen, as soon as your avocados start to ripen, and ripen means they barely, barely yield when you touch them, they just barely, barely, push in, not a lot, just barely. They're still kind of hard. Put them in the refrigerator right away. And once they're in the refrigerator, they stop ripening. And then your avocados will last. I, these avocados are over a week old. And every day, or what not, maybe not every day, but every time I need one, I just grab one out of the refrigerator, open it up, try to use it. And my last avocado tip is to keep the avocados fresh I pour filtered water on the surface of the avocado and then kind of drain it off, put saran wrap on it, stick it in a glass container, and it won't brown. It won't brown for days. Uh, try it and you'll see. It, it does work. Okay, let's see if there's any other questions. I can't wait to make this sandwich. I got a huge stack from Costco this week, really new ones, really good ones. Okay, well everybody, here's the sandwich. Um, you know, it's not hard to make. I think, you know, in addition to having a sandwich, I want you to think about other ways to use tempeh. You can make a big batch of this, and it's really good in things like fried rice. 
stir fry. All kinds of uh, dishes go really well with tempeh. It's a great meat substitute. Let's see who else is, oh, Nancy Farrar. Nancy is the famous food photographer in Fort Worth. I know she's probably looking at my video and shaking her head, thinking it's pretty lame, but thanks for watching. Sandy Tilt, hi Sandy. Sandy was uh, at a class here. Can you do a class on flatbread? Well, let me think about that. It's really hard to make flatbread without using some kind of fat. It's kind of, uh, it doesn't turn out very well, but if I find a good recipe, I'll let you know. So try your tempeh, try it with some other things. Patty Grantham, I've been intimidated by tempeh, but now I'm ready to try it. Good, try it. But remember, if you missed the beginning, we got the tempeh from Trader Joe's. It's a blended tempeh. It has rice, barley, and millet. And what that did was that made it a lot easier to cut. It didn't fall apart. Regular tempeh will crumble a lot easier. So I think that's why they did that. And remember, steam it. Get your old steamer out. You probably have one in the back of the cabinet. Steam the tempeh for 15 minutes. That will kind of reduce any kind of um, strong flavor. So she missed the beginning. Every Did you cook the tempeh in water? No, I steam the tempeh. So I put it, there's a basket in here. You know, when you, the water's at the bottom, the basket's at the top. So the tempeh is just sitting in here and it steams and that kind of uh, makes it have a more mellow flavor. So if, if you have questions and you're not sure about some of the things we did, go back to the beginning. The video will be recorded as soon as I get off. What I do is I go in, put the recipe up and a picture of the food, and then you can go back and watch the video. I feel sorry for you if you have to watch it again, but you know, all the information's on there. So I appreciate everybody who's watching so much. I'll try to read your comments. Um, <clears throat> it's kind of hard to see straight ahead when you're wearing bifocals, but you know, I'm doing my best. So uh, I'll go back and read any comments I didn't answer. I appreciate you watching my videos. I'm doing them every single day, which um, if you have a recipe request, send it to me. Uh, let's see, how about a class using your barbecue grill? Okay, rarely use one since eating this way. Okay, well, hey, you know, I have a grill and it's like directly behind me and I've taught grilling classes here many times. So yeah, I'll, I'll definitely give it some thought, especially now that the weather's getting nice. Great time for grilling. But um, send me your suggestions for recipes you'd like to see me prepare and I'll do my best to try to do a quick demo on those recipes. So if you make the tempeh, the TLT, tempeh lettuce and tomato sandwich, post a photo of it, tag me in it, and share your photo with the rest of us. So thanks everybody, I hope to see you back here tomorrow. Bye-bye.